time I watch a sex offender get stomped out in county jail. Let's get into this. So one day, me and my homies were sitting there watching the news, and there was this dude that was accused of touching his two-year-old daughter. Me and my homies were sitting there, and we're like, damn, if that dude ever comes into this section, bro, ooh, boy, he's gonna get it. So about two days later, we're kicking it, and the next thing I hear is this dude, hey, hey, that's that sex offender dude from the news. And we were like, what? And so we all run to the window, and we look out, and we see him. Dude, I shit you not, it's really him. They're putting him into the section next to me, but you can see through the windows. This is before they put the black film on the windows. Now you can't see out of them, but back in the day you could. I run immediately to the fire door, bang on the door, and tell Blue next door, this dude named Blue, this crypt. Hey, bro, that dude that they're bringing into the section is the dude that touched his daughter. He was like, what, for real? That dude did not last in that section, not even 10 seconds. He immediately went in and Blue just started beating the shit out of him. And that's fact. What happens if an active gang member comes back to prison on a sex offense? Let's get into this. Let me introduce you to Mr. Millerberg. This dude and his wife had a 16 year old that was working for them as like a nanny slash maid. Mostly she would just end up watching their kids cause she was like a family friend's daughter. This idiot and his wife decide let's go get her high on some opiates and do all of our weird shit with her. Sick bastard. Well little do they know she ends up dying. She ODs. And now these two idiots are tripping. Oh my god, what do we do with the body? They went and hit her in the mountains. The body was found. They tried to go back up there and move the body. They got caught. This dude used to be an Aryan gang member. But being a sex offender, they don't play that shit. This dude got stabbed and took off the yard, which means they beat him and he is not allowed to live around general population. This dude is an official check-in. Moral to the story, don't hurt kids. Facts. Why is Pooh Shiesty wearing this in this picture? Let's get into this. I'm gonna try to use my wording right so they don't take this video down again. In prison, if you're wearing one of these, it's because you told the cops it's game over, you're done. You don't wanna be here no more. If you catch my drift. They put you on 24 hour surveillance and they make you wear one of these. You cannot rip this up and they do that so that you can't make like some crazy thing out of it like a noose. It's also fireproof, which means you can't set it on fire. We, as convicts, call that thing a turtle suit. We clown people for being in this turtle suit. Everybody's hard until they have to go to jail and actually do time. Then they want to pull this card and then really act like they bowed it about it. Me personally, I've never ended up in one of these. When I was faced with time, I ate it and handled my business, and that's facts. Why do inmates knock on the table before they get up after they eat? Let's get into this. Now, this is a good question because when I got locked up, I didn't understand this either. Knocking on the table is a sign of respect in prison because in prison, we always have to make sure we know where our friends are because there's a lot of danger. By knocking on the table, you're pretty much telling your friends, hey, are you guys good? I'm good, you know what I mean? I'm gonna go dump my tray and I'm gonna go up to my cell, homie. If you need me, I'll be there. If you're gonna actually break the law, break the law smart, part one. Let's get into this. Tip for you guys. Did you know the feds cannot track a FaceTime no matter what? Even if your phone is tapped, the feds still can't track a FaceTime. They can track a message, they can track a phone call, but they cannot track a FaceTime. And that's facts. Who is Burner420? Let's get into this. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce myself to everybody here on TikTok. A lot of you guys already know me. I grew up in Ogden, Utah, okay? Where I grew up, it was mostly Hispanics, mixed with a few whites and blacks. I started getting in trouble when I was 12 years old because I decided to make a false call to the police clowning around, trying to tell them a house was on fire, me and my buddy. And I know everybody in here probably thinks that's stupid. I was 12 years old. I was dumb. I made a prank call. It went wrong. The cops showed up really deep to the house and I ended up getting caught for it because I used one of the phones I had to call the police so it got tracked back to me. I went to DT. I spent most of my time in juvenile care facilities. I went to a juvenile prison called Mill Creek. I did four years there. Why incarcerated there, I was never in a gang. I didn't join a gang until I got to prison. But incarcerated, I kept getting in trouble, fight after fight. That's what kept me so long. 
I ended up getting unsuccessfully terminated and sent to the adult system where I spent four months in jail and I got out on probation, adult probation and parole. After I got out, me and my friend was drunk one day and we broke into a smoke shop and stole some stuff. Dumb decision. We didn't really come up on much. Not much gained. Three weeks later, I got caught for it because another girl got caught for it and she told on me. There was actually four of us. They were trying to charge my friend that didn't get caught with us because of her witness statement. So what I did is I took the case for everybody, even her. Me signing the paper saying I'm the sole person that did the crime actually made it where she can be charged for it too. So not only did I take the hit for my homie trying to be a good person, just because I took the hit for my homie, I had to take the hit for her, which left a salty taste in my mouth. But it is what it is in the streets. If you get caught, you got to man up and do your time. That's just how it goes. So I went to prison. I did eight years in prison. I was only supposed to do 18 months. I got involved with gangs when I got to prison. I was a white boy. I ran with the Mexicans. This is me before prison. See, no tattoos. This was me when I got caught on Utah's Most Wanted. And this is even my throwback Tarzan mugshot or John Travolta, whatever you guys want to compare me to. But as you guys can tell, I used to be in a gang. I know sometimes when it comes to TikTok, I get involved with drama, which I really honestly shouldn't. But my whole purpose on here is to help kids stay out of trouble. I turned 18 months into eight years over unnecessariness. All over some people that said they had my back when they really didn't. Truly, I was the only one being loyal. And it cost me an extra six and a half years of my life. But now I'm out of that life and I'm doing the best I can to be me and make smart decisions. And that's what are the top three prison myths that there are? Let's get into this. Number one, dropping the soap. This is not a real thing in prison. In prison, you shower in single showers. You don't shower with other people. And plus, if you drop your soap and you're actually willing to pick it up off the ground, you nasty. Number two, going to prison and saying you're just gonna beat up the biggest dude that you see so nobody messes with you. In prison, you do not underestimate anybody. You might run up thinking you can hit him with a sucker punch, and guess what? It might not work. He might just eat it and then embarrass you all over the tier. Number three, you have to join a gang in prison to survive. This is a myth. Honestly, you can ride through prison solo, just stay out of everybody's way, and don't try to get in other people's business, and you should be fine. And that's facts. What is it like on your last day of prison? Let's get into this. Now, when the cops let you know you're getting out of prison, it's the night before you get out. So, for instance, if you get out the 25th, on the 24th, that night around 11 o'clock the cops will hit you up and say hey roll up you're going home tomorrow now as inmates there's an unspoken rule if you leave you leave everything you don't take nothing home except your pictures maybe but you usually have those rolled up and ready to go before you actually dip because like i said they roll you up the night before now we leave our tvs all of our clothes our food, we leave all that to our celly or to our people. Now, in Utah, on site, there's a DMV. So at 6 o'clock in the morning, they roll you up, they take you to the DMV, and they let you get your ID. Because normally, they give you $100 when you get out of prison. And you got to cash it. And that's facts.